Hello, and thank you for watching. I'm Jennifer Bowman with Olympia Piano. And in today's tutorial, we are going to do group one from a dozen a day. This is the blue book. There's one book that comes before this it's pink book. It's called the mini book. This is called the preparatory book. So we are going to start with group one, number one, walking. A couple of things to consider during this exercise. First, we want to work on our hand position. So by that, I mean, we want to have a firm bridge. This part here is the bridge. We don't want that to be caved in like that. And then we want to work with a gentle curve with our fingers. So we don't want to be playing with flat fingers, but we also don't want to be playing with our fingers so curved that we feel like we're going to fall off that way. So we want to have a gentle curve of the first joint here. And here's what I show my students. See this hair clip. So if our joints are like this hair clip, our hair is going to fall out. But if we have the joint, if we clip that, that's how our first joints should be. So don't let them be like that curve them. Get your wrist low and then you're going to just scoot it up and you'll find where your fingers are going to grip the keys for these exercises. For this exercise it's the top half of it. So group one walking. We're going to also do the solfege syllables and that is do, re, mi, fa, so going up the scale. I usually have my students write them in between the staffs so you get really used to that language. It's going to sound like this. with all the exercises in this group is I like to have you try it in different positions right away. So for example, we could try this in minor. We could change this me to may. We could do it in minor. Or we could make do as D instead. Do, re, mi, fa, so and play the pattern in D and so forth. This is the side view for walking. I just want you to see the slight bounce and the shape of the bridge. So just go up and down. Bounce. Just a little bounce of the wrist. Exercise two is called running. Same exact notes that we just had in walking, but now they're joined together at the top. Those are eighth notes, so those are quicker notes. And what we're gonna try to accomplish in this one is we're gonna play a little bit further on our tips and we're gonna incorporate some wrist motions into running. So when we're going up with the right hand, I'm gonna encourage you to have your wrist do a slight little swoop down. And then when we go down in the right hand, we're gonna go over the top. So if you put those together, you have a little circle. letting my bridge cave and I'm not letting my first joint cave and then the left hand when the left hand goes up it will go over over on the top under on the way down so basically if you're starting with your thumb you're gonna swoop down if you're starting with your pinky you're gonna swoop over so they will feel opposite when you do it together so I'm gonna do this a little bit slowly trying to group the notes into groups of four here we go. choreography but it is actually kind of fun you could also try it with your hands swooping the same way so you could do under you could practice running. The main thing being 
make sure that there's some sort of flow with the wrist in this one and you're playing on the tip of the finger. Here's group one, exercise two, running. I'm gonna show you the different ways you can roll your wrist around for this one. So you can either go or if you want, you can go over on the way up. I think it's easier when you lead with your thumb to have your wrist go down. When you lead with your pinky, stand up and go over. Here's exercise three, skipping. Skipping, we are going to be skipping within our scale. So do, be, so. And this makes a major chord, by the way. So going back and forth within the major chord. Notice that skips on the staff, they look the same. So a line to a line or in the left hand, a space to a space. Intervals of thirds, fifth, and sevenths are all on the same type of note. So line, 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 line. Whereas seconds and fourths are different. Line, space, line, space. So just starting to recognize that chord tones in root position look the same. So we're gonna do the same thing we did on walking, except now we're just gonna play fingers one, three, and five on do, mi, and so. Here we go. Little roll up, wrist bounce. One, two, three, four. On the whole notes, I like to get in the habit of having a slow, gentle roll up of the wrist so you're not just ending and hanging down like that. So we have one, two, three, four, lift. Here's exercise four jumping and Jumping, you'll notice we are creating a chord with each hand. So first we have Do, then we have Do and Mi. Again, a skip apart or a third apart, line to line. And then all three of those notes stacked up together. It's called a chord, line to line to line. In the left hand, it's the same thing, but with spaces. And then you might notice the little teeny dot underneath the notes. And that dot is called a staccato. And what that means is you're going to play the note very short. So you're not going to play one, three, four. You're just going to touch it quickly. And you don't have to make the notes staccato. So you don't have to play them a certain way. Just play it quickly and release. Here we go. Also, <clears throat> rhythm is important in this. The second thing you see in the measure is a quarter rest. So make sure that that rest equals as long as the notes. So it'll be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Click. And now you're gonna have a roll up for four counts. Here's exercise four, jumping. I want you to see the quick touch staccati for this. So it's gonna be a quick snap of the wrist. The hand's gonna stay mostly in this nice shape. It's gonna look like this. Then roll up. Exercise five, the splits. I love this one. This one is fun to play. This is what we call contrary motion. And that means your hands are going different directions. So you'll be using the same fingers at the same time for this one. So it feels really fun. So with this exercise, I wanna encourage you to play on the tip portion. Our thumbs are sharing middle C and we're gonna to try to have a flow out to the pinky and back in and flow your wrist the same way. So we'll go under, over, under, over. As we go out to do, re, mi, fa, so, so in the right hand and do, ti, la, so, fa, and fa in the left hand, we're gonna get a little bit louder, which is called a crescendo. So it's gonna sound like this. Exercise six, deep breathing. Again, we're working with the major chord, do, mi, so. And in this one, we're going to incorporate a slow roll up that we've been doing on those whole notes earlier in this chapter on the dotted half notes for three counts. So 
I like to tell my students, your wrist is your, your lungs expanding. So your lungs expand like this. And our wrist is just gonna expand like it was our lungs. One, two, three. So it's like our lungs do not expand like this. They expand slowly. Or think about blowing up a balloon. So again, do, be, so, line to line to line. Left hand looks different. Here we go. Roll up, roll up. Here's your expansion. Four, three counts. Left hand does the same thing here. Roll, roll, roll. One, two, quick. One, two, three. Pinkies on C. Here's exercise seven, cartwheels. This is an introduction to something which is called an arpeggio, and that is just a fancy word for a chord that is played one at a time instead of in a block like this. So we're going to do a left hand over right hand arpeggio, and there's a couple things I want you to think of as you're playing this piece. First of all, when the left hand crosses, it's gonna cross at an angle. It's not gonna cross like this from C to C. So just cross over with your second finger. Second thing I want you to notice is the very last measure, the right hand goes up to super high C. So in the right hand, the C's are, we have middle C has its own line. We have high C, which is on the third space. And then super high C has two lines, super high. And that's how we can distinguish that super high C. So here we go, we're gonna have the same bounciness on the quarter notes as we've had. Do, mi, so, major triad with the crossovers, rolling up for three counts, just like we did in deep breathing. Here we go. Crossover, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Reset, left hand gets ready. One, two, three, one, two, three. Three. By the way, I'm having you do a lot of bouncing with the wrist just to get used to the flow of the wrist. Once you get a little more accomplished, you're not going to be bouncing as much. It might look something like this. But I want you to get flexibility in your wrist while keeping that bridge, and that's why we're doing a lot of bouncing at this time. Here's exercise seven cartwheels. I want you to see the angle of the left hand when it crosses over. So we have. It's crossing over, not like this, but like this. Here's exercise eight, deep knee bend. This one's kind of fun. The left hand goes down from middle C, down an octave to low C, whereas the right hand, I call the right hand, that's the body of that little person there which stays steady, and then the, the deep knees are the left hand going down. So we've got roll up, roll up, roll up, roll up, touch, 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 hands go together. So just getting used to what it looks like, middle C down to low C, they look different. Middle C has a line, low C is on the third space from the top. Exercise nine, hopping on right foot. This is an exercise in staccati. Staccati is the plural of staccato, so we're gonna play all those notes nice and short. You will notice going up, we're going through our chord tones, do, mi, so, and then in measure three, we come down the scale. So, fa, mi, re, do. So here we go on the tips of your fingers, and nice and light, just touch the keys lightly. motion, firm fingers, same thing. Here's the left hand, starts with a pinky on do. Quick wrist. Try this in different keys, try it on the key of E so you feel, and so forth. Exercise 11, standing on head. This is practice for a major scale. So in the first measure, you see one, two, three. So you're not gonna play one, two, three, one, two, three. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cross our thumb under 
to the next higher note. So do, re, mi. Do, re, mi. You're going to play on the keys. One, two, three. And then the thumb's going to come under. One, two, three. So here we go. So going up to la. Then that little thing above the word almost that looks like a curve with a dot in it. That is called a fermata. That means hold that note extra long. And then we're going to do it a little bit higher the next time. So we're going to end on our fourth finger on T. So we've got do, re, mi, fa, so, la, T. Hold that and then get your thumb down and try it again. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, T. And that is your major scale. Here's exercise 11, standing on the head. I want you to see, here's the little tunnel that the thumb is gonna be crossing under. So we've got a really nice bridge. It's not gonna work if your hand is collapsed like this. So get your bridge up, pass your thumb under that tunnel. Here's exercise 12, fit as a fiddle and ready to go. I always love these, they're like little tunes getting us used to one and five harmonies. In this we've got chord tones, do, mi, so, and scales going up, scales going down. Here we go. One, two, Thank you for watching this short tutorial on Dozen a Day Blue Book Group 1. I hope that you found it helpful and I hope you will subscribe to my channel for more videos on piano technique, piano literature, and quick piano tips. Thanks again for watching.